So The Great Gatsby just came out in the theaters, and I thought that would be a great time to revisit director Baz Luhrmann's earliest movie, Strictly Ballroom. Baz Luhrmann is best known for Romeo and Juliet and Moulin Rouge, and now he's back with The Great Gatsby. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm hoping it turns out to be good. It's usually not a good sign when something's due to be released around award season. It was due out around Christmas time, and then it's pushed to the following summer. Usually that means that they had some screenings that let them know that the movie was no good, and they're trying desperately to fix it in the next six months. That brings us to Strictly Ballroom. Strictly Ballroom was a smash hit, and this went to AFI Fest cleaned up like crazy. It was Baz Luhrmann bursting onto the scene, directing a movie based on a play that he co-wrote from an original idea that was his. He used to be a ballroom dancer when he was a boy. 1992's Strictly Ballroom. The movie opens at a ballroom dance competition and we see our protagonist, Scott, and he is owning it. He's got the super sweet moves. He and his teammate, Liz, are awesome together. Then we meet his enemy, Ken, during the samba. Ken boxes them in and they can't get out. Scott breaks out and starts freestyling, flashy, non-regulation steps. Quick burst of documentary styling that doesn't make it past the first 10 minutes of the film. Scott's mother, narrates her absolute horror that Scott has gone rogue and is doing all these flashy steps and what have you. That's the only time we get the, like the to the camera documentary style interviews with cast members and then that doesn't happen anymore. The Australian dance president is not impressed. They lose. I'm not dancing with you till you dance like you're supposed to. The next day, his mother's ballroom community tries to talk some sense into him. You need to dance regulation steps. You need to go by the book if you want to win competitions, Scott. Scott's dad, Doug, is watching film that he shot at Scott's latest competition and his eyes are filled with delight at his son's innovative dance steps. Back to his mom, who's previously a ballroom champion to some degree, telling him that he's got to play ball, and then everybody leaves the dance studio, and Scott stands there, starts doing his own dance moves. This girl from the dance class that was just going on, Fran, who's only ever danced with girls because no one wants to be her partner, she is in the beginner's class. She's spying on him, dancing his sweet moves. He's like, what are you doing here? And she's like, I want to dance with you. And he's like, you're in the beginner's class. I want to dance with you your way at the Pan Pacific. Which is the big show. That's the big time. Scott tries to shut her down, but she gives him a good yelling too, and she starts to cry. He starts being like, okay, let's try some stuff, and they start dancing a little bit. Shows that she's got a little bit of promise. She starts showing Scott some of her crazy made-up dance moves, and he's totally into them, and wants to learn how to do her stuff too. But he still tries out other possible partners. None of them are any good. Then one day he and Fran are rehearsing and having a great time. Doug, his dad, shows up and interrupts their rehearsal, and they go hide because they don't want anyone to know they're rehearsing, so they go run up to the roof and they start practice dancing to Cindy Lauper's Time After Time. If you're lost, you can look and you will find me Time after time Which is great. We also see that Scott's dad, Doug, is down on the main floor tearing it up, doing all kinds of crazy moves. So they dance until sunrise. It's pretty romantic. And at this point, Eliza turns to me and goes, it's weird how she's figuring out how to condition her hair as this movie goes on. It's the classic 90s rule. Contacts and conditioner is how you turn a homely frazzled girl into the prom queen. Scott walks her home, telling her about how the rumba is the dance of love, but it's only pretend we're not actually in love. And Fran's like, no, I know, don't worry about it. What are you talking about? Oh, this is so silly, so silly. Her father just does not understand what's going on. He wants her to stay home. And she's like, I just have this competition thing. And he's like, no, you will stay home from now on. Fran sneaks out of her house to go to the state championship. Then we hear that the partner of all dance partners, this girl named Tina Sparkles, would like to pair up with Scott and become his dance partner, and that would be like just huge. And everybody knows except for Scott and Fran, and they all start talking about how wonderful it is. And so Scott and Fran think that they have found out that they've been dancing together and that everybody approves so wildly, and they're all excited. His mom drops the Tina Sparkles bomb, and Fran is devastated, and she books out. Scott runs after her. He tracks Fran down, and she's like, oh, you should dance with Tina, you'll win. I could never do what she does. And Scott's like, I want to dance with you. It's an Australian film. They start to dance behind the curtain, and it's all intimate, and it's obvious that they're good dance partners together, and they're staring at each other longingly. China, who was also watching the movie with me and Eliza, had the insight to declare that this proved that they were gay bones for each other. Everyone starts gawking at them, and Fran gets tripped up under the pressure of Liz's scornful stare. The ladies try to put the kibosh on all of Fran's dreams, and they tell her to go home, and she's like, okay, and she leaves, and Scott mouths off to the powers that be and is like, I want to dance my steps and I want to dance with Fran, not Tina Sparkles. I'm sorry, Tina, I'm not available. No, Scott, why? And Scott runs to Fran's house, 
Fran starts trash talking herself about how she can't do it, she's not good enough, and Scott wants to dance with her. We won't win. I just want to dance our steps. Fran's dad shows up and tries to kick him out. And then in order to win their approval, they must dance the Paso Doble. So they start dancing the Paso Doble and everybody starts laughing. And then her dad's like, let me show you how you Paso Doble. And then he tears it up Paso Doble style. Fran's grandma teaches Scott to feel the hot Latin rhythm. And then together they own the night with dance and he is embraced by her family. Federation president denies the rumor of new steps in a headline of the newspaper. There will be no new steps in ballroom dance. And then in this scene they're obviously chain linked in love together and he says you know what i said about the rumba being a pretend dance of love i think maybe i made a mistake and then they kiss and everything's wonderful right or is it he goes back to the dance studio and scott is told that his dad was on track to be the greatest ballroom dancer of ever but he blew it by dancing his own crazy steps and then we go into what is truly a bizarre flashback sequence. Everything is so over the top. Scott's dad was originally his mother's dance partner and then he got too high on his own ballroom dance momentum and wanted to dance his own steps. He thought he was above the law and so dancing his own steps caused him to lose the competition that drove him away from dance forever and made everybody sad. He only hoped that one day Scott would pick up the dance mantle and finish what he never could by dancing traditional ballroom dance. And Scott is kind of devastated to learn of this. And he goes and he breaks into his dad's secret locker and sees all these pictures of competition dance, validating the story in Scott's mind. And we find ourselves at the state championships and Scott is dancing with Liz the traditional way. We're gonna stop there for a minute while we talk a little bit more about Strictly Ballroom. I remember seeing this movie as a kid, and the only thing I retained from it is coming up a little bit later on, but I remembered an overwhelming feeling of really enjoying the movie. Watching it now, I was surprised at how over the top it was. I was still able to enjoy it, but it wasn't the movie that I remembered it being. As with a lot of Baz Luhrmann movies, the costumes and some of the production design, way big, you know, super colorful, super over the top really design oriented. A lot of performances are way, way big, a little too big. Since everybody's doing the same thing, that's clearly the movie he was trying to make. The best dance movie ever. And I know a lot of you want me to say Dirty Dancing. Though that might be the best dance movie just because the movie itself is so good, I'm talking straight up overcoming adversity dance movies. It's gotta be said, it's Step Up 2. Step Up 2 is an amazing dance movie. The closing dance sequence alone, as evidenced here, And here. Bounce. Bounce. And here. I've watched a lot of movies in which kids from the wrong side of town overcome adversity through dance. And the step up quadrilogy is probably the one to beat at this point. Step Up 1, I didn't see much of. Step Up 2 is actually a movie you can watch all the way through. Like, plot, dialogue, everything. It's a little silly, but the dancing makes it all worthwhile. Step Up 3, the dancing is amazing. The story is garbage. Step Up 4 is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life, ever. Now, you didn't know that I was such a connoisseur of dance movies, did you? However, if we were going to go old school, Singing in the Rain is probably the best. That's like the best movie musical ever. So why don't we finish out this tale of ballroom dancing. Let's see if Scott can overcome the restrictions of classical ballroom dance and become his own man. And just for the love of God, be together with Fran. So Fran is dancing back in the beginner's group with her girl partner. Scott is getting ready for the Latin final, but he wants to go talk to Fran. His dad wants to talk to him, but Scott keeps blowing him off. Fran yells at him. You've got your Pan Pacifics to win, and I'm back in beginners where I belong. And his dad is like, I need to talk to you, Scott. And he's like, not now. And he's like, yes, now. And his dad never raises his voice, so he's like, okay. All right, dad, what's up? And his dad is like, look, your mom abandoned me as her dance partner right before the big championship because I wanted to dance her own steps. She didn't believe in our steps. She didn't believe in me. You should dance your own steps, Scott. You should believe in your dream. It was a dancing that mattered. So Scott bails on Liz at the last second. Liz wails like a banshee, which is all she's really good for. She's not a bad dancer. And then the state championships have begun already and everybody's doing their thing. And then comes the only part of the movie I remembered from when I saw it as a kid. Scott's entrance. 
Oh, he enters in a slide. He slides across the length of the room on his knees. And he swivels and he's awesome. And he and Fran start tearing it up with their own dance moves. The ballroom dancing powers that be are so determined to put a stop to it that they pull the plug on the music. They're standing there and the guy is waiting for them to get off the floor. And he's like, you guys are spending. Get out of here. And it's just deadly silent, and they're looking around kind of embarrassed. And then this clap begins. And then you're thinking, oh my god, they're getting the slow clap. Like, and then everyone's gonna join in, and it's gonna be a slow clap. But no, it's his dad clapping to create a beat. And the others join in. And Scott and Fran continue their dance to the beat of the clapping of the audience. It's such a moment of victory. And Scott and Fran dance out the rest of their dance in glory. And then everybody comes onto the floor and starts dancing. And it is a happy ending. Last week's question, The Dark Knight or Avengers? The Dark Knight won 40 to 22. Those are only people who definitively had an answer. There was a lot of people who gave comments that were kind of waffling between the two. I myself was a proponent for The Dark Knight by a slim margin. One thing that is interesting is that people talking about the Avengers kept talking about the heroes. All the people who liked The Dark Knight more, nobody hardly talked about Batman at all. It was all about the Joker. The Batman movies usually stand on their villains and Heath Ledger sold The Dark Knight, in addition to Christopher Nolan's storytelling. I mean, that was just the best Batman movie of all time ever. This is the last cinematic study guide. Next week we are going back to Pops updates so I can spend more time finishing episode seven of the Platoon of Power Squadron. My question for you this week is simple. I did these study guides. Which one was your favorite? Tell me why if you want. Thank you for watching the study guides. Thank you for sticking around. And thank you to all the students who took my class at Columbia this semester. You guys have been great. I've enjoyed watching all of your channels. Now I'm gonna go back to doing what I do, which is being a bad YouTuber, only focusing on my web series. That was Strictly Ballroom, and this has been the Cinematic Study Guide. <laughs>